Thank you, President Lin, for facilitating Benjamin Huang's invite of me to come here and present to you some thoughts that I have on the work of the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project, which is an open project that has been running now for about 11 years, where we have had the pleasure and the honor of working with many scientists around the world who have explored the phenomena of low energy nuclear reactions. So I'm calling this presentation Working with Nature and uh, Possible a Nuclear Reaction Mechanism in Water. And I can see it's changed the fonts there, so this might be interesting. Uh, what you're seeing in the background there is a leaf that my child found on an Italian, uh, on a Greek hillside. Uh, because she said, Daddy, this looks like your, your symbol. <laughs> uh, so she, my, my children have learnt to see this everywhere, and you'll see that it is literally everywhere. So, um, hopefully by the end of this presentation, you'll have a clue about how I think low energy nuclear reactions occur. Um, but very simply, Lena, low energy nuclear reaction, is a coherent matter-driven phenomena. Uh, to achieve it, you need two things. One, charge separation. Two, multi-axis magneto-hydrodynamic shear. That's it. Lena is initiated by a self-organized fractal toroidal current structure that is also present inside the natural phenomena of ball lightning. Ball lightning is enhanced in the presence of atomic and bare hydrogen because they both have a magnetic moment. And also because hydrogen, as you'll see later, can be hit by an impact of over five electron volts and it produces etheric matter. This was discovered by Nikola Tesla and it's been recently brought back in by some of the Russian people. It's apparently 2,000 to 4,000 times easier to do this with hydrogen than any other element beyond lithium. And oxygen. Oxygen because it is uniquely paramagnetic of the gases. In fact, the magnetic moment of oxygen, sorry, here, is something like 18,700 times the magnetic moment of uh, atomic hydrogen. And if you're going into an intensely magnetic structure, as you will see in a little while, this is important. So, water contains both hydrogen and oxygen and is therefore an ideal initiator fuel given the right environment that fulfills the two conditions above, charge separation and multi-axis magnetohydrodynamic shear. Oh, I'm going backwards. <laughs> so, in 2017, I had the pleasure of visiting a ultrasonic expert, Suhas Ralkar, in his lab in Mumbai, in India. And there he showed me a sonicator. You can see the PZT devices up here. And this is a hollow, hollow cylinder, and it's producing a helical sound wave resonant down here. And I used some high-speed photography, and I caught a range of different structures. Here is one of them. And you can see on this soliton structure, there's a wave function going around it, but there are also these helical pairs coming in at regular distances. I thought this must be important. I didn't know much about hydrodynamics in 2017, but I thought that must be important. And I'm going back again. <laughs> I'll get this in a minute. Right. All of the things you're seeing on the screen here are examples of hydrodynamic processes. This is a smoke ring, okay? This is a smoke ring with a laser cutting through it, so you can see the flow pattern, okay? This is in that Suhas Ralkar uh, video that I showed you me taking previously. Now, what you'll notice here is that this is actually two solitons, but they're actually flat and on top of each other. And the reason you're seeing these is because there is nano bubbles in here that are fully collapsed 
the gas is dissolved in the water. Okay? And what I'm doing is I'm shining a light from the side. And something is causing this whole structure to create bubbles and the light is reflecting off the surface of the bubble. So what does that tell you? That tells you there's something here and there's something here and all of the pressure is going into those points. How is that possible? How is, how is the total pressure going in here? You know, and where is the release? Where is it going to? Because it, it's all the way around this structure. It's also got this vector behind it where it depressurizes things behind it. Now, if I could play this video, you, you would see here where this soliton sucks in this one over here and it joins it. And these little particles in the water are drifting sideways, like they're in a different universe. It's very odd. Okay, backwards again. So, over a series of experiments, so here, here we see the one that I've just showed you. And this is the standard hydrodynamic um, structure. And this here is an, an experiment we developed, and I'm going to show you how we came to that. This is aluminium foil, and this is the same structure over here, and it has this area down here where it does some disruption. This is a plasmoid uh, ball lightning that we synthesize in the lab, and it's collided with fused quartz sideways on and you can see it goes in the top here and down here and this is the overall torus here this is the beam that comes through the center and that's the overall magnetohydrodynamic structure this is hho separated water did this in japan with a marza gas this is two second three second exposure on tungsten tungsten welding rod in those two seconds it produced this same structure and you have a destruction zone here where this material here is carbon. This is strontium. And in here you have all of the typical elements that are in your body produced in seconds within this structure. Something really amazing is going on. This is another experiment I'll show you later, but this is the same as this. It's aluminium foil and I'll talk about that more later. But this does produce exactly the yin yang. Not slightly, it's exactly the yin yang. And it, it's extremely easy for even a three-year-old child to perform this experiment first time, and they will get it right every time. And I'm going backwards again. I will learn that. So the experiment involves aluminium foil, the top of a CD cake box, a $35 ultrasonic cleaner, water, and you combine these things and I'm going to learn this. Why was forward up? You get ultrasound producing these resonant nodes, hundreds of them, in a very small period of time. And this is under a macro video frame. This is an optical microscope, and this is a scanning electron microscope. And you can see you have a cone with a pit and a pit with a cone. This is the yin yang of the hydrodynamic vortex. And I mean that, it's literally what it is. And when we turn off the sound, we see a toroidal bubble. And we have video, this is peeling off and it's, it's collapsing into a normal bubble, okay? When we look at this on high-speed videography during the ultrasound, you see a vortex of material going in. So, we have vortex going round, it, that's the Arturus. We have it going around like that, but we also have a vortex going in like that. So we have multi-axis shear on this structure. And I'm going back again. I'm going to learn that. Right. So the hypothesis I'm going to try to describe is that self-organized, sound-initiated resonant yin-yang structures leads to fractal toroidal moments and vortical matter flow, which captures dark matter, focusing it to a point through which other matter flows. This leads to weak interactions, the type that you have observed, fusion, fission, transmutation, and coherent matter phenomena, including matter collapse and rebirth, collectively matter transformation. Now, you mentioned the hydrogen bomb earlier as the only successful hydrogen fusion technology. Well, 
In 1948, one Winston Bostick was charged with Project Sherwood at Los Alamos National Laboratory, Princeton University, and some other places. He fired, no, I'm gonna get it right, here. He used deuterated titanium electrode, 10,000 amps, a, a very short duration pulse, and he produced a current loop here with a uh, poloidal magnetic current, and it did magnetic reconnection and produced this overall torus structure. This, he had a number of them, at, at least two, and he would fire them from others, all different as, uh, sides of the chamber over a magnetic field, and it would produce a torus of tori. Okay? In 1957, he proposed that this could be the basis for the structure of all matter from the subatomic to the formation of galaxies. And we all know what's at the center of galaxy. A big black hole, right? Which is about the most gravitational body you can expect. So we can assume that going through the center of this object, there's a little bit of gravity, okay? Whether you like it or not, and whether you have an opinion about, oh, we can't talk about gravity, there will be gravity going through this. He also found that these structures travel at 450,000 miles an hour. It was the fastest thing known to man at that time. And in fact, NASA have done experiments on plasmoids as propulsion devices. Now, in 1980, some of his later research with Nardi found that when they shot these plasmoids at witness materials, they found these D4D ratio rings like this, and they had sub-ring spokes around them. And that's as far as they went. Oh, God. <laughs> now, I was exploring the technology of a guy who is an autistic agoraphobic from Canada. And he employed high potential sources, either Tesla or, or Van de Graaff generator, ur uranite, sources, uranium sources, and electromagnetic waves. Anyway, he had some very weird effects. And this got the military very interested and so on. And the guy called Kenneth Radford Shoulders, who invented the micro screening technology for computers and phones. He also invented the quadrupole mass spectrometer. He was brought in to investigate what John Hutchison had done. And after th three years, oh, sorry, after uh, five years, he published a book in 1987 called E.V., A Tale of Discovery. And eventually he called them exotic vacuum objects and he said they were the same thing as ball lightning. I obtained some samples on behalf of the project from John Hutchison and these were synthesized in 2007. And on this aluminium sample, I saw a soliton with a lump and a soliton with a hole. This is the yin-yang structure, okay? Now, if you take one of these and you rotate it 90 degrees, then it is a D4D structure at the next quantization level. And if you take this structure and you rotate it 90 degrees, you get these scallop sections around this one, and this is a D4D structure. So I came up with this particular structure. It is a wheel within a wheel, within a wheel. It's a complex toroidal electrodynamic structure, okay? And this, in my view, is the structure of the exotic vacuum object, and it is what Winston Bostick saw colliding into those witness plates and published in 1980. And it is the thing that they were trying to use the Dep US Department of Energy at Los Alamos to try and do domestic fusion rather than blowing stuff up. To cut a long story short, using an experiment where we have about 700 volts, some brass sheets, and I actually have this sample over here and I can show you, we produced a, a fluidized electrons. These are ball lightning and they flow out un, un, in between the two uh, brass sheets. And in this area around here, we found a few things. One is iron-rich crenelated spheres, which is a signature of ball lightning, and I will show you that in my long-form presentation. But we also found these tori of tori, and these are collapsed wave functions. 
in my view, matter wave functions. And they are made of calcium oxide. Calcium, oxygen, and calcium oxide are all paramagnetic. So they can live within the intense magnetic structure. Around the outside is carbon. Carbon cannot live within the, the magnetic structure because it's diamagnetic. It goes away. But the ions orbit around the structure. They can be captured by it, but they can't go inside. Here is some copper. Copper is also diamagnetic. It can't live in this structure, but it gets carried along with it. So this would be 48, as I showed you in the derived structure, with six sections. This is 36 with six sections. This is a number, but it has three subsections. And this is 15 subsections with just two subdivisions. So you can have different levels, at least two, on each fractal level. OK. So I sent my initial understanding from 2018 and this structure from 2020 with the first of the collapsed wave functions that I observed from experiment in 2022 to the Soviet cold nuclear transmutation and ball lightning community. And they came back without comet immediately. They threw in the towel. And they sent this paper from Biology of Life from 1995. And it's referring to a guy called Zverblis, who witnessed classified Soviet energetics research in a Moscow basement in 1988. This is a coil of a coil of a coil of a coil. Now, in that paper, they describe current loop, magnetic field. Rotate 90 degrees, magnetic loop. Rotate 90 degrees, uh, uh, electric loop, right? Magnetic field. That is exactly how I described how this structure is built. But this isn't exactly an electric field here. This is a toroidal moment. OK? Now, in our experiments also, this is a copper tube, like you are using in your experiments. And we see on the video, on a, there's another iron block below it, and there's one above it we see a hemisphere plasma structure. And instantaneously, this copper section disappears. It just disappears. And, OK, so it's gone, right? Now, if we look at the boundary here, because all of the interesting stuff happens at the boundary, we see, under the SEM, a two-order structure, a three-order structure, a four-order structure with a square hole, a five-order structure, a six-order structure, and an eight-order structure. Okay? So you can imagine here and here you have one of these toruses, and that makes a, a, a fractal torus above. Okay? This is your two-order structure. So if I go back, that is the, the structure that is producing this. Okay? This is your four-order structure made of four orders. It could be four-order made of two. Okay? That is what is producing this. Okay? Now, the vector through the middle is where you are getting a phase singularity. This is where all of the matter is going, your electrons, your iron, and your relic neutrinos, and the nuclear reactions are occurring. And they are occurring in something that creates a sphere or a hemisphere, depending on whether it's stuck on a piece of iron, right? And within that, matter can collapse into the center. And this is the sphere. It's the non-radiating boundary. And when you have a fractal toroidal structure, the individual components of the electromagnetic waves cancel at this point, and there are zero electromagnetic waves coming out. There is only the scalar and vector potentials coming out, right? But inside here, if you can charge it using scalar energy, okay, and that could even be sound waves, right? This can get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until all matter will collapse. And a guy called David Freiberger from SLAC, Stanford Linear Accelerator, calculated in 2009 that from standard Maxwell equations, the same ones that were, were, were used in 1992 by an, a Russian scientist to calculate the nature of these structures, that it would increase what he called the diality angle beyond a threshold in which baryons would lose their reference to the Dirac sea and they would fall apart. 
And this would explain what Matsumoto is observing, the complete collapse of matter. He's not the only one. I can show other people that observe the collapse of matter in my long-form presentation. So, just to confirm, in 1965, Vladimirovich Dubovic at Dubna, it, out north of Moscow, he, for his thesis, discovered the toroidal moment. This is a real thing. It's not a north-south dipole electric, ma magnetic moment. It's not an electric field. It's a toroidal moment. It was published in 1967. It was verified in the West in 1997. And it's now in major peer-reviewed journals looking for next generation technology in communication and data storage. But they're looking at it on the itty bitty but nano scale, right? We're looking at it on the let's make things disappear and do interesting stuff with it. So again, electric current produces a magnetic uh, vector. Rotate that 90 degrees, magnetic vectors link together to make a toroidal moment. Rotate that 90 degrees, and you get what the Russians call a hyperteroidal. This is a TM to, to the uh, second order, and then you get those to the N order, and it's the N plus one. That's how it works, okay? And you can have anything, in my view, from two up to 48 on each fractal level. So the level of different organizations you can have is just spectacular, okay? So, it was actually built on the 1957 Anapol of Yakov Zeldovich, and Yakov Zeldovich said all stable matter, whether it's an electron or whatever, all fundamental particles are actually anapoles, because they don't radiate electromagnetic waves, okay? And what you're creating is a massive particle. It is an exotic vacuum object. It's not an ordinary vacuum object. It's like you're creating a whole new object, but it complies with the same rules as how everything else works in the universe. Okay, so, um, yeah, so they call super or hypertoroidal moments in the literature, so if you want to go and look these up and look at research, there's a lot of research out there, um, but I don't believe that they either accurately describe the self-similar nature, because no one had physically observed these things until our research, okay? So, uh, hence, I call them the fractal toroidal moment because it's exactly what they are. Right. Now, what is the phase singularity? This is a, a Penrose staircase. If I go round here, I'm going, you know, up the stairs. I'm actually not going up. Or if I'm going down the stairs, I'm not going down, right? I'm stuck. This is a Mobius strip. A Mobius strip has a phase singularity at the center. Okay, you can go round and round and round, but you're not actually going anywhere. <laughs> This is the phase singularity of uh, a vortex soliton. Exactly what we're looking at. Okay? So there is, on these fractal toroidal structures, fractal phase singularities. Does anyone have any questions so far? So, so then the toroidal gas on the center of that yeah. uh, can be treated, you know, I don't know, can be treated like a black hole? No. Yes, exactly that. Exactly That's, right. That is exactly what it is, yeah. and actually black holes are these in yeah, my view. That's one yeah. Yes. It is. It's, I think we're solving the black hole at the same time. But that's the reason why a material disappeared. Do you see it's copper that one just gone? Yeah. Uh, this, the overall structure changes the um, epsilon zero, the dielectric constant of the physical vacuum. And so the ability of charges to represent ordinarily changes. The speed of light changes and time changes. So it does, it, it gets around many, many problems. So I think everyone can work out what's going on in here, right? I'm the figure skater spinning around, right? And as I pull my mass in, my angular velocity has to speed up, right? Now, and here you have the gyroscopic effect. Okay, very simple. Now, does anyone know what I'm going to see here? Yeah. 
Now what you've got to um, what what ah uh, what you've got to imagine is that these are not washers, that they are electrons. And electrons have the Pauli exclusion principle. So as they are coming into the center of this well, they will force each other 180 degrees out of phase. If, one goes, if one's behind, it will be pushed more around that way and when it reaches the equilibrium position, okay? And as it goes down in its gaining, gaining velocity, it, to become coherent there, it's actually going to have to shed energy. And this is what happens as it's going into that phase singularity. It's shedding the energy. So what you end up producing is a topological monopole. Okay? And this is exactly the structure. And in fact, they have done predictions and using Bose-Einstein condensate gases at Alto University, they have got actual images of what is produced. And the 3D model that I showed you earlier is better at showing the structures that they see from physical experiment than their own mathematical calculations. And it's much simpler. Okay? But you have this central spin horizontal, the spin down, and you have this, this is the overall bubble of the structure, and this is the point of the phase singularity. This is the topological monopole. And everything is coming into here. Okay. Now, in a 1976 paper where they fired a laser pulse into a nonlinear plasma, they produced a magnetic field of over 1,000 Teslas. Okay? This was replicated, funded by the US Department of Energy, the U European Union, the UK, China, South Korea, and Japan, and published in 2021. Here, the laser is going into the nonlinear plasma. You can see the flow pattern here is the magnetohydrodynamic flow pattern, okay? Ah, ah, okay. Um, and what you are seeing here in red is 1.36 thousand Tesla. Now, the biggest magnet that has been produced on Earth is for supposedly for a magnetically confined fusion by MIT, and it's 50 Tesla. This is self-organizing with one femtosecond laser pulse into nonlinear plasma, 1.36 thousand Tesla. Now imagine you had a resonant phenomena where it doesn't matter if you're only building a little bit at a time, you're building and building and building. It's like Tesla said, a snowball rolling down a mountain is getting bigger and bigger. Sooner or later it will vanquish anything. Now look at something also very interesting. In the center, we also have 1.36 thousand Teslas, okay? And it stops dead. It doesn't carry on through. It's exactly at the phase singularity. Now, we've already discussed gravity going through. This is a Gion from 1954 from this chap, John Archibald Wheeler, the guy that worked on the Manhattan Project. He says this electromagnetic wave, a standing wave, which is basically what matter is, it's trapped light, right, is held together by a gravitational azimuth. That is a gravitational azimuth. So we have gravity coming through here, we have intense magnetic field, and we have a toroidal moment. We have a toroidal moment, and we have ions coming in here. We have everything focused to an incredibly small point. And the fields calculated for these structures, this is 20 microns across. I've already showed you structures that we've observed much smaller, and they are fractal all the way down. So the substructure in here can have a much higher field strength, and then higher and higher and higher and higher. And if you keep piling on the energy and it's not being lost, it can get very, very, this is one pulse. One pulse, a resonant phenomena builds and builds and builds and builds. So, what you can have is a scenario where trillions of atoms are forced into this little box and they all become coherent. You can make, so that the, the challenge is people think you can only make a Bose Einstein condensate, a coherent matter, at near absolute zero. 
I learned from the Lockheed Martin 2013 paper, Systems and Methods for Creating a Coherent Matter Wave, that using an electric discharge of electrons going into some 10 micron cavities, they could produce coherent matter wave using the Aronhoff bomb effect, which allows for phase synchronization and energy exchange. Okay? It's the Aronhoff bomb effect that is critical to this process. And you know what? It occurs in the center of a fractal toroidal structure. And that was pu published in uh, nine, the 1990s by the team, including uh, Vladimir Vich Dubovic. Okay. So. Ah, yes, I need to press here. Ready. Okay. And here it is. Afanasyev and Dubovic, some. Mm, okay, I'm not going to use that. Anymore. Some remarkable charge current configurations. Joint Institute for Nuclear Research. And here we go. This is a fractal toroidal structure. Thank you very much. That, this is a fractal toroidal structure. And the magnetic time-dependent Aronhoff bomb effect for the charge current configuration discussed in the text is time-dependent magnetic flux differs from zero only inside the impenetrable torus outside the T in the end of blah, blah, blah. So basically, it only gets affected in here, inside the torus. So, the Aronhoff bomb effect allows for phase synchronization and coherence of matter at any temperature. I don't care whether you're working at absolute zero to a trillion degrees. It does not matter. You need the save matter wave function. So let's say aluminium 27 or oxygen 16. And then you need them at the same kinetic energy and in phase. And this does the business. So, we now have a structure that allows for electronuclear collapse at a point. And this is in your books, which I have given you from Takaaki Matsumoto, the nuclear scientist that worked at Hokkaido University. Okay? This is what he physically observed. We observed it also. The matter goes into the point of electronuclear collapse. It goes through a wormhole and it produces, in the center, heavy elements like titanium, iron, etc. And on the outside, you get production of things like carbon and oxygen. Okay? Now, they're not the same elements, necessarily, that go in. And I will show you this wormhole on this sample. Physically, you will be able to see it. And it's like this. You have a north uh, magnetic, pseudo-magnetic monopole. It's, a, it's a, a topological monopole. And that is the yang. It disassembles matter. It unwraps matter. And then you have the yin, which is the um, topological monopole south. And it assembles matter. One is unraveling matter, and the other one is uh, uh, raveling matter. Uh, what happened there? Oh, you went forward. Well done, you. <laughs> okay, so here you have an electrical discharge underwater. There are the two points. This is the reentrant jet here, and the size of the maximum size of the bubble is the non radiating boundary. And you have the cl classic crumb image of a cavitation bubble. It is the exact structure. Here, this is in an Amasa vibrator system operating, and I will show you that in the long form presentation if we can go, go through it. But in the center, you see here triangular holes on either side of this hydrodynamic vortex. Why? Because there are substructures in here. And in fact, when you look at this un, uh, closer, not on this screen, but you can see spheres that have been made in the corner of each of these corners. In this one here, this ran for 360 seconds. This is the experiment that a three-year-old can learn to do in seven minutes using $35 of equipment that I showed you earlier. Inside the golden ratio line here, inside the Visica Pisces, yes, the first symbol of the Christian church. This is the Maltese cross. This is the swastika. This is the salvis sticker. Okay? This here, inside this Vesica, uh, golden ratio line and the Vesica Pisces, you have boron. 
Boron is this aluminium minus oxygen. Over here, you, and there's no calcium here, inside this golden ratio line, inside the Vesica Pisces, with this spiral galaxy structure, and yes, it produces exactly the structures of spiral galaxies, and you saw this in your experiments as well, Bin. There is calcium, which is some isotopes are aluminium plus oxygen, and no boron. This is a Yang structure. It is tearing the matter apart. It is sending the matter over here, and it's fusing in the yin. The Yang has to work with the yin to create matter. Okay? And so, I think that's probably... Okay, so, what I've done is I've done a little rubbish sketch, cutting through, rotating that metal 90 degrees. So we know that we have a vortex coming in and a vortex coming in here. Um, we have this motion of the bubble. This is the bubble I showed you earlier. So we have vortical motion, anti-vortical motion here, and uh, this is producing a, a push of fluid through here, but this is also producing a toroidal moment that goes out this way. The toroidal moment can interact with relic neutrinos in the environment. It pulls the relic neutrinos in here. The ordinary matter is coming through here. There is a flux loop going between the two that are connecting, but there's a center point here where on one side it unwinds matter, and on the other side it winds matter. One side it tears matter apart, and when I show you the long form presentation, Kladov showed complete destruction of matter, radiation remediation, which was verified by the Soviet uh, we weapons remediation program. And he also showed the longer you do this process, you get a larger and larger spread of elements. Because you start building on one side and breaking on the other. So if you start with some heavy element and hydrogen, you end up averaging down and you end up with all of the elements, sooner or later. Okay? Now, what is actually happening? Metal is hydrophilic. What that does is it produces polarization of the water in a thing called easy water, right? This means you have negative charges going around. That is exactly what I showed you in the plasma. And that exactly produces the toroidal moment. Cavitation water is the best. And in fact, even when it's in a free volume, because you have a, a gas phase in here, you, you will have a boundary layer which will also have this kind of structure forming. So even the toroidal that's formed in the free volume of water will have this process going on. So essentially, that's what it is. Um, and this is Ken Shoulders saying basically dark matter is involved. And here is Bin Zhuen Huang's uh, uh, um, reaction up here. What I will note here is that in the center, we have oxygen because it's paramagnetic. But around the outside here, we have carbon because it's diamagnetic. It cannot live inside the inside of this structure. Oxygen is the key. In fact, uh, any magnetic or paramagnetic elements is the key. The products you get typically are diamagnetic, like helium, carbon. This is the key product here, but also neon comes out of your experiment because it's diamagnetic. It, it doesn't like to live in here. It gets synthesized in there, but it gets kicked out. Okay, so this is the very basic structure, the basic yin yang. If, if you only have one side, you only have the gravitational wave going through. There's nothing to link through, okay? Um, this is the non-radiating boundary. That's what makes things disappear. But also, if there's any radiation produced in here, it comes out to here and it can't go anywhere. It's like a Star Trek shield. And also, matter can't really go in here. The only thing that can join this are similar objects. Normally, no radiation, alpha, beta, gamma, or x-ray, unless you blow these things up. When you blow them up, then you might get moments of radiation emission as the overall thing collapses. Massive synthesis of elements, both heavier and lighter. Right. So, this is how far we haven't come. Ken Shoulders wrote, by some irony of fate, and this is after five years of looking at John Hutchison's material, in his book, E.V. A Tale of Discovery, 
By some irony of fate, we have folded back upon ourselves and now have accidentally discovered that EV is an ideal monopole oscillator. This is 1987. This oscillator is the perfect generator, uh, generator for vector and scalar potential waves without contamination from electro or magnetic fields. These waves can be thought of longitudinal waves in the vacuum. They are largely undetectable by standard E and B detecting means, but are readily accessible to the monopole world. There appears to be an incredibly large number of useful phenomena yet to arise from using potential effects that are not immediately accessible to the force of E and B fields. The phase, this phase determined, this is the Aronhoff bomb effect is necessary to do this, force-free world will certainly be another chapter somewhere in the future. Go forward 30 years, and this is in Nature Materials, published in Nature Materials. This is the image, and next to this image it says, non-radiating configurations. Such configurations consist of toroidal dipole, this one here, represented by a solenoid with oscillating poloidal currents here and an electric dipole here, represented by a pair of opposite charges oscillating the same frequency as the currents. With appropriate phase difference and oscillation amplitudes, destructive interference takes place and the combined source does not radiate electromagnetic fields. However, the scalar and vector potentials associated with the radiation of these dipoles do not, ca do, uh, do not cancel, but instead propagate to the far field. Hence, a non-radiating configuration acts as a source of electromagnetic potentials, but not electromagnetic fields. The physical significance and detectability of these potentials are not established and are being actively discussed in the literature. When you have a fractal toroid, this happens by default. You don't need to have this oscillating electric field. And that was already said in 1987. Okay? I think or is this strange radiation? Yes. Radiation. Strange radiation can go through metal mm -hmm. because it has no expressed charge. And everything inside this bubble, it has its mass and inertia screened. The, uh, the applications for this technology are phenomenal. In communication, in transportation, in propulsion, all kinds of things. And it's all described by Ken Shoulders decades ago, right? Um, yeah. So. The answer to this technology is literally in your face. And it always has been. We are the answer to the program that runs the universe. And you cannot have an opinion about this. You cannot improve it, right? It is perfection. Each one of you has a perfect example of this structure manifest. And when you understand that the there's a destruction zone here, which I showed you on that tungsten with the ball earlier, when you look at the ratio between here and uh, here and here and here, it's the golden ratio. So when you understand that uh, it's only this part here that does the construction and destruction, and there's another one down here which is on the fractal level, that is why your bones are these ratios. So it not only defines the face, it defines the physiology of the human form and all across nature. So I started with a leaf and I'm ending with a human, right? You cannot make anything better than this. The, na the, the ancients knew, I don't know how they knew, but it's in all of the ancient iconography. The paisley, the yin-yang, the swastika salvastika, the Maltese cross. All of these, and the fleur de lis, absolutely all of these are demonstrations that the ancient people understood how the universe worked. And we are relearning it. We are not the most intelligent pe people to have ever existed on this planet. And we need some humility. Because the power of this technology, I call it the God's toolbox with a little g. Because using this technology, you can create matter, you can transmute matter, and you can destroy matter on any scale. It is scale invariant. And we must respect this technology. Thank you very much for your time. It's Yeonmi Park. She's a defector from North Korea to America. So, and if you overlay, for instance, um, Tutankhamun's face, it's identical. So the answer has always been with you in the mirror. Do you have any questions?
So then the vertical, the like a toroidal, that one, you know, hydrodynamic usually we have talked about as trains, you know, the vertical trains, that one, one like hydrodynamic, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the terminology. Is that one is major by Tesla in the gear or is major, you know, different kind of like strain? I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my glasses? Understanding this technology helped me to understand what Tesla knew. Now, Tesla's father was a, um, an Orthodox Christian pre pre priest. It's no coincidence that Tesla was able to understand this technology. It, it, when, you, when you see what I'm about to show you, it will be undeniable. This is my last slide from my presentation, that's the first slide, <laughs> in Poland this year. I have this 